All right, look, before the season started, when the NBA put together this schedule, this was supposed to be a matchup of maybe two teams that could contend for that number two spot in the East behind the Celtics. We don't know what Philly's going to be yet because we had no NB, we had no PG. But we do know what the Bucks should be based on, A, their past, and Dame and Giannis being together now for a second year. Based on what you saw tonight, granted, it's just one game, where would you say their ceiling is in terms of being that number two team in the East? Wow, Michael, it's still going to be tough to be the number two team. I, I, I don't believe anything I saw from the Knicks in game one at Boston. That, to me, is just something I dismiss. Uh, we haven't seen another team that I think a lot of, but apparently the odds makers don't. I don't know about you, and that's the Indiana Pacers, who we'll see in Madison Square Garden on Friday night against the Knicks. You're right about Philadelphia. We totally don't know with no Joel and no Paul. We just, we have no idea. And it's probably going to be, I don't know, three, four, or five games before we see the full complement of the Philadelphia 76ers. So we're just going to have to withhold judgment. I know nobody wants to do that in this day and age. Everybody wants snap judgment, knee-jerk reaction. Sorry, not going to get it here. Um, but the Bucks, I still worry about Middleton, Michael. I mean, Middleton was not just some guy for, along for the ride when they won a championship three years ago. He was then the second best player on the team. I know that he would probably be the third best now because we got Dame going like he did tonight for 30 points and playing the way he did, nine rebounds and just sort of feeling it for a stretch there. And Giannis didn't have to do too much and still almost had a triple-double flirted with that. Yes, the Bucks are a threat. Yeah, Dame, Giannis, they're great, but sometimes two players not good enough right now to win you a championship in the NBA. But while we have you, Mike, I do want to get your perspective on something else because we had the report from Shams earlier today that the league is likely to open an investigation into the Sixers' plan to limit Joel Embiid's availability this season. Embiid didn't play, as we said, one game in the preseason, expected to miss at least the first three games of the season, and he said recently that he won't be playing back-to-backs. What's your take on this entire thing that's playing out here in Philly? Well, the thing I really care about is sort of Embiid's availability. The league, the investigation to me, not that big a deal. I mean, not everything's a big deal. The league does this. They can do it. It's in place. The provision is in place to do it whenever players miss games. So I'm, I, I'm not going to say I'm dismissing the report. I'm dismissing the importance of what the league is going to do there. Now, let's get back to Joel Embiid and playing. The Philadelphia 76ers, Michael, have a difficult choice to make. They can try to win 52, 54 games and perhaps risk having Joel Embiid healthy at the start of the playoffs. Hasn't been that healthy at the start of the playoffs recently. How's that worked out for them? So they've got a choice. And the question becomes, I have a producer at PTI who says they ought to treat Joel Embiid like a starting pitcher. And just, you know, not every fifth day, but every other. <laughs> and, okay, so you exaggerate to, a, to an extent. But if he plays 50 games, if he plays 50, and they get him to April 15th healthy, would you think people here are going to boo that? You think people here in Philadelphia who are understandably frustrated, they pay good money, they don't get to see Joel Embiid. But they need him in the spring. They don't need him now. They didn't, nobody's handing out trophies for what happens in the middle of October. So I understand it's a dilemma. It's a tough call. What are they supposed to do? They're not going to go in there and say, Joel, we're going to force you out to the court to make you. No, they're not going to do that. It's not practical. And the Philadelphia 76ers are only going to go as far as a healthy Joel Embiid will take them. So you, people got to get used to that. And they'll do it accordingly, and it's going to be frustrating. It's going to be maddening. It's going to test people's patience. And folks are going to boo on occasion. But what happens? Does it work by the time we get to mid-April? That's the question.